Hello and thank you for stopping in. This message is in reference to Christian giving, whether to tithe or not to tithe. Good God-loving, God-fearing Christians are falling on both sides of this issue, whether to tithe or, or not, and a lot of debate goes into this. I'd like to give you at least a little bit of information on the flip side of this issue of tithing, arguing for the fact that tithing is not scriptural, that Christians are not called to tithe. Here, here's a sample verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. In the New American Standard Bible, it reads, Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In the NIV, this wording, obviously, is going to be just a little bit different. Here it reads, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Both of them ending up virtually the, the same way. The context here is probably best summed up as us being directed to give back to God, that is to honor God with our giving in a way that love purposed in our hearts. Love decided in our hearts that we should give in such and such a manner to a specific degree. Under the Old Testament law, the heart of everything was focused on the legalistic attitude of you must do this. That's how God had to deal with these people. Everything was you must do this. It was one plus one equals two and don't try to change because this is the only thing that the people could truly relate to and even that they did a horribly poor job of honoring God in it. The gist of it was to look at the law and do what you were required to do. One plus one equals two. Do that and you're good to go. You've been obedient to God. And obviously there's some good, very good to be said about being obedient to God. Would that Christians were guilty of being more obedient to God in our day-to-day -day routine and relations with Him. Under grace, however, you deserve how much, excuse me, you decide how much you are going to give in honoring God. It's up to you. It's up to you. There is no tithe, in part because the temple is gone. The major reason for the tithe, not the only reason, but major reason for the tithe, the multiple tithes, was to support the temple, and the temple does not exist anymore, so there's no place to actually give the tithe. I understand that if you call half a dozen synagogues in your area and question your rabbi there, you will find out that contemporary Jews do not tithe because there's simply no temple to give it to. It would be totally misleading and is certainly not honoring to God. There is no current tithe. Instead of being mandated by law then, God gives you and I the opportunity as Christians to give as we decide in our heart to do. In other words, it's all up to you and me now how much we give. Take it in a different, slightly different direction for a moment. Imagine a romantic relationship. And we're not in a romantic relationship with, with God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, but it is a personal relationship that you and I have with him. But imagine for a moment a different context. You and a ro romantic partner, you're in this romantic relationship. Do you have to tell your partner, do you want to tell your partner when to say, I love you how much would it mean to you if your partner said, I love you, only when you say to him or her, you haven't told me that you love me in a long time, tell me right now. Wouldn't mean anything at all, would it? If that was the only time that they said, I love you. Imagine a child that only says, I love you, when you yell at him to do so. Junior, tell me you love me. Do you love me? You haven't told me you love me in months. Tell me you love me. Oh, I feel so much better now because you said you love me. Really? Are you really going to put that much import into that? No, not really. 
under the New Testament, under grace, giving is rooted not in obedience to rules or the law, but how much you love God and how much you appreciate Him and what He has done for you. The common perception of the tithe on the one hand is to give 10% of your gross income. How much more do you give when you're not limited by the 10%, but rather you're motivated by love? Instead of being legalistic about it, if you can genuinely afford 15, 20, 25 percent, maybe you only really think that God wants you to give 5 percent now, but whatever it is, 5 percent, 15 percent, 25 percent given out of love means something simply because it's given out of love. You pray asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. And now he's not going to come out and say, or painted up on the chalkboard, give 12.73% of your gross income this week. Doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit is much more subtle than that. He will speak to your heart, and as a rule, He is not going to broadcast it into your mind that you should give X. Rather, if you've made it a, a matter of prayer on a regular basis, Whatever you feel comfortable in giving in the name of Jesus, you just go with that flow and it's going to be the amount that the Holy Spirit is directing you to give. I can remember on more than one occasion when praying about specific situations, not necessarily the giving, uh, in, in fact it was on other subjects entirely, but uh, several times a message came to me, that the, or the thought came into my mind, whatever I do, God's going to bless me, because my motivation is to honor Him. So, whatever I do, God is not a legalist, the Holy Spirit is leading, and I will be giving what God wants me to give. And that's what he's looking for. That's all he's really looking for. Which do you think God really prefers? Under grace. That you be legalistic and backed into a corner and you have to give 10% even though that temple's gone, long gone. Or do you think it's more a personal relationship between you and God? And because out of your deep appreciation for the relationship that you have with him, it hurts you when you can't give more. That maybe there's an amount in your mind that you really want to give, but when you look at your finances and your life situation, realistically, God is just saying, no, that's not the right thing to do right now. You have a responsibility to your creditors. Go ahead and do that. I will take care of the rest. And so you give as you are purposed in your heart, as the Holy Spirit leads you to decide in your heart that you give. A growing Christian really loves these special moments when God touches our lives in a very special way. Giving based on love instead of compulsion is a very special joy. There's no doubt about that. Giving based on love for God will smooth out the bumps in your financial life. It really will. He may drive more money your way or pass savings on to you. Or even more powerful, unbeknownst to you, he may prevent expensive things from coming into your life and bring you additional blessings into your life. But you know what? While all those things I just said are quite often true, there's one much more important overriding principle at work here. It's not whether as in the Old Testament, God attached special, special blessings to the tithe when people tithe. When God blesses us quite often because we have given out of love, God does direct financial blessings our way. But you know what? There's something much more important, a more important principle at work here that just may come your way. He may not do anything specific in response to your giving, no matter how sacrificial it is. And you know what? When you're really in love with Jesus, it just really doesn't matter. It just really doesn't matter. 
don't keep score. Don't base your giving on how God is going to bless it tit for tat and bring all these other things into your life. They're just not important. Do it with your motivation being your love for Jesus Christ and just how much he means to you. Give then as God purpose in your heart. Give as you have decided. Don't get wrapped up in the legalism of the tithe. Give based on love. In Christ's name, amen.